but I leveled up. Fell victim to a sacrifice, making clever moves with my pawns and nice. Most wanted in the streets, but that's a part of life. This is the land of milk and honey, baby, stars and stripes. Tell my Hey, yo, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day, feeling blessed, and like I always say, it's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. So with that being said, first and foremost, you see my subscriber and his merch. You know, go check out his Instagram. His link to his business and his website will be right there. He got new merch coming out all the time. So give the boy a shout out. Give the boy some love, man. So thank you. With that being said, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like. Always leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Check the links in the description for my Apple and Spotify music. Go ahead and run my streams up. And you can check out my playlist section on my YouTube channel. Check out my music right there. Thank you guys for you guys' the time. Most importantly, thank you guys for you guys' support. I was in subs. That's when everyone's like, oh my God, you're a celebrity. So it's like, at the end of the day, I'm grateful for what I have. I'm I remember when I first jumped on YouTube, man. Y'all see the thumbnail. Y'all see what I'm about to talk about. But when I first jumped on a YouTube, bro, I was, you know, I was looking, I was still looking for a job. And this was my very first YouTube that I got rid of, right? And it's, it was stupid. But I used, to, I used to always wear lokes and a beanie, and I always had like a black shirt, so I looked all thugged out, and I used to talk about my torta tails, the ones I was doing right at the moment. I'd come home and tell a video about it like the same night, right? I had hella torta videos, bro, hell of them, bro. I'd be making fun of them and all that, and then out of nowhere, like I did one prank, right? I farted on my mom, and then some pe hella people, I had like maybe four or 500 subscribers, like, hey, bro, keep doing the fart videos. And that's when I took it down. I was like, bro, all these fools don't even want to hear my torta tail. They want to see me fart on people in public. And I farted on my brother's face. I farted on my mom's face. And I bent over when she was eating one time and farted in front of her and recorded it. And I was like, man, I got to get rid of that, bro. So thank God I ain't doing that no more. Now, nah, but on a serious note, man, I trip out, bro. You know, first and foremost, shout out to Esbone, passed away. I'm not going to sit here and dive into the circumstances or the hearsay. And I've heard of so many YouTube channels talk about what, what he passed away for. That's neither here nor there, man. The fact of the matter is, man, another person left this earth at the hands of uh, gun violence, gang violence, street violence, whatever the violence is connected to. Botch robberies or his paperwork. It doesn't matter to me because I didn't know the person. I still don't know who it exactly is other than he's a rolling 40s crip and he was doing big things. He was getting paid for interviews. I mean, damn, getting a cash payout, 10 grand for 10 for an interview. That's that's tight, bro. I would go, I would do it. Well, it depends on who asked me to do an interview for 10 grand, though, too. You know, I don't want to be associated with certain things. But still, though, I'm starting to notice a trend in the last past year or two, even though it's probably happening before my time, before I jumped on a YouTube. To me, YouTube was a platform that people can come on and, you know, be themselves, share their political views, share their personal opinions, share what their life is like, become content creators. You, it's, to become a content creator, in itself, the definition, bro, just sounds so positive and meaningful. Not corrupted, not negative, just, hey, man, create some content. Show the world what the world looks like. Now, to me, I look at YouTube like, man, I get to see what everybody else is doing. I get to see what everybody else is talking about. It's like we all live in this same world, and it's all available to us. I ain't got to go travel to different cities to know what L.A. looks like. People are going to post a video about the streets of L.A., and I can watch L.A. From the, for the comfort of my own home. But everybody wants to become public figures, and I understand it. Trust me, I'm becoming one every day, and it has its perks, but it also has its curses. It's a blessing and a curse. I always tell myself that every day for the last past year because my content's a little bit more dangerous to embark on, and I understand the consequences by me doing so. But see, before I, had, I started receiving the... Before my consequences got any bigger for me jumping on YouTube and talking about certain situations, certain political parties, certain people that are connected to gangs, trust me, I already, I already, I was already facing consequences on the streets for just being for who I was and what I was and who I am now. So the circumstances just get worse every day by the stuff that we all talk about. But I just don't understand that the vastness of the population prefers to target people that are on YouTube, people that are on social media more than the people that they're actually actually beefing with on the streets. See, you got individuals like S-Bone who got targeted in 916 in Sacramento. And everybody knows Sacramento is a dangerous street. They politic different. They move different. They react different than the streets of L.A. And he's being from L.A. But you've seen a lot of people from up north go to L.A. and get caught slipping. Lil T.Y.S. went down there, got jumped by hella sureños. Now, you would think he would just go home and chill and relax and be like, you know what? I got caught slipping, bro. That's my fault. I'm from Northern California. I shouldn't be in Southern California doing what I'm doing. But the first thing that people want to do, like himself, he went live and talked about it. Like, oh, man, he started disrespecting them, calling them derogatory names, making fun of them. Like, ah, oh, y'all jumping. Y'all barely gave me this. Man, that's woo, 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 woo. 
Like, bro, sometimes those situations need to humble somebody. They really do. You have a lot of Northern rappers want to do music videos in LA. You see that Bulldog Fate 300, he's going to LA doing music videos and he's coming back up north bragging about it. Like if it's subliminally saying like, man, I, I wasn't touched in LA when I went there. Yeah, I, I, get, I get what you're trying to say and the message you're trying to put that you can go anywhere you want without being touched. But we're starting to see time and time again, these same public figures, rappers, Southern rappers, Northern rappers, YouTubers, content creators, you once you reach a certain star fame, a certain type of publicity, you know, just know that whether it's good or whether it's bad, you're going to become a target. I seen a streamer. He's a gaming streamer. I don't know why this, this kid was just, a, I mean, you could tell he was just a kid that was a goofball and never got a, day, a fight a day in his life. And he's talking about, I'm at where somebody would jack me for my Nikes. I don't know where he got to become a, a notorious gang member from an individual who plays, you know, streams games all day. And then guess what happens? Some gang members catch him slipping, beat him up, set him by a tree, recorded it, and they took his shoes from him. Now, I get it. He looked tough. He looked super tough. But every, I think everybody's following the 6 9 trend. You know, you're becoming trending, trolling people, disrespecting people, going too far, talking about dead homies. We're seeing a lot of these rappers do it to one another, and people are getting smoked behind it. Look at the Young Thug case, the YSL case. Look at Young Dolph. Young Dolph was beefing with Black Youngster, and now Black Youngster's brother, since he was connected to all this, connected to Black Youngster, he had to pay the price. He was just shot dead. So a lot of people are talking about S-Bone, but look, Black Youngster's brother just got taken out just for being connected to the death of Young Dolph because of the whole situation, that whole case. It seemed like everybody that was involved in that case are getting targeted. See, the people that you hang with, whatever they stand on, whatever they believe in, just because you hung with them, you're going to pay the price because other people are going to assume you with them. And that's what's hurting people a lot more nowadays. It's like sometimes people are not even responsible for what other people do. But because you decided to be in his little music video, because you decided to be in his snap, you decided to stand right next to him when he was disrespecting his ops. Trust me, they see him and they see you too. You're going to get it with them. Guilty by association can't get people hurt and can't be, get people killed. But what trips me out is like not like I, every day, bro, every like maybe once a week, maybe, maybe once a week or every other video, I'll get a comment, especially when I drop a YouTube short about anything. I could be making fun of my, my toes, bro, how I got crusty toenails, bro, and I got dirt underneath them. And then I like to clip them and smell the part of the corner, that little lint. I like to smell it. I could do a video about that, bro. And there's going to be one individual like, hey, yeah, this YouTuber is the next Savage Studio. I'm always getting compared to Savage Studio situation because of what I talk about and what I do understand anymore in the beginning like i said i started off wrong and i corrected the errors of my ways before i got deeper into the mix but i'm starting to see that people are utilizing youtube to you know defame other people's character whether it's true or whether it's false you know the, I, I think people are starting to implement street politics and street uh street ways of thinking and street beefs on social platforms for some reason like it's easier but do do realize that, you know, posting people's addresses, posting people's pictures, you know, it sucks because there was a time that when I was beefing with the people that I used to beef with, they were sending me pictures of their kids and their addresses and pinning their locations from their snaps. Like they'd have these individuals on snap, grab the location, screenshot it and shoot it to me. I'm like, bro, there's your op right there. Go get them. And I used to be like, wow, bro, like you're on his snap. You're his friend. For all he knows, like you're a cool person, but you want to see me and him go at it. Because I'm a public figure and he's a public figure and we did two music videos dissing each other. Y'all want us to take it to the guns and take it to the streets. Y'all want to see one of us get buried so that way it's another video for you to watch. To me, I don't look at it any different. For me and another person that are beefing, we point a gun at each other's face. As opposed to just taking it to YouTube and pointing fingers and shooting, tagging one another into videos and just going at it back and forth through videos. You know, we're instigating situations with YouTube, a platform that belongs to everybody. You know, it's, it's a free platform for everybody to upload a video and just be who they want to be, share their opinion, share their thoughts, share what they're going through. And we're just weaponizing a social media app to engage on one another, create bigger beefs that come from the streets, that stem from the streets, that should have stayed in the streets, taking it to YouTube, and we're targeting ourselves even more. And we're targeting each other even more because not everybody's going to sit back and instigate the situation but people are really going to fall victim to these situations that we're taking from the streets and putting them all over YouTube. And it sucks. It really sucks. Trust me, I've gotten many phone calls by people that provided me stories to tell on YouTube. 
because I made a commitment to tell stories that other people don't want to tell themselves, I said I would do it as long as it's credible information and it's not smutting up nobody in particular. And then I, they'll tell me these stories and I'll tell them and then they'll, have, they'll, they'll always tell me like, bro, I hope you know what you're getting yourselves into talking about these. These are delicate topics, bro. These are serious situations. These are serious individuals that want to knock people down for speaking on their name. Well, the way I look at it, like, yeah, I do understand my circumstances. I understand the consequences of what I'm doing. I do. At least I'm doing it for a positive reason, though. I'm not doing it so I can see this Mexican mafia member go at it with this NF member and just sit there and laugh with a bag of popcorn and watch it and watch people get hurt. I'm not doing that. I'm just doing this so the kids know, like, if you're going to gangbang, this is what you got to face. You know, make your choice and make your choice wisely and do it now before you get caught up and you can't make that choice no more. That's why I'm confident in the subjects that I talk about and the content that I create. I'm very confident in what I do. But to sit there and always be told every other phone call, like, yeah, bro, you know what? You got to move out of there, bro. They're going to get you, bro. They're going to they're gonna take you out the game. You're going to be the next Savage Studio. You know, that's a, it's a constant reminder that I face every day. And, and it's been said so much that I, I remind myself without anybody else reminding me anymore. But it shouldn't even come to that. In reality, his situation was a lot more different. You know, he pinned his location. He actually told everybody where he worked at. He actually instigated the situations and he got individuals like, you know, Toro, Mexican Mafia member, mad. You got a lot of young rappers dissing each other, pinning each other's locations. Got a lot of gang members uploading videos, putting with a burner in their lab, driving around the streets of, you know, Mission District. And they're from the lower district talking about these fools ain't posted outside. They ain't doing nothing. You got Southerners in Northern California, like, man, still instigating situations with the Northerners, even after the peace treaty, just going like this. But instead, it's on YouTube. Something like that we should have been like, all right, man, go start in his hood, man. If you can catch him, you can catch him. If that's your uh, goal and ambitions of today, instead of getting a bag or going to your baby mama's house, spending time with your kids, instead of, you know, bagging his baddie you see walking around that you've been trying to dog out forever, instead of doing all that or chasing the hustle, you want to drive around this fool's neighborhood just to record it and say, hey, bro, these fools ain't out here. These fools ain't out here. I be out here. Then by all means, but does it need to be placed on social media? No. Do that on your own time. Don't instigate situations and don't promote engaging in violence like it's a popularity thing because it's not. It's real street beef. A lot of these industry rappers are beefing one another, dissing each other's labels, dissing each other's hoods, dissing each other's ops. But the real ones are out there killing one another. They're getting the credit for it because of the star fame. Oh, yeah, Lil Durk instigated the situation like 10 ops are dead. King Von dissed everybody, and then look, he ended up dead. S. Bone was dissing this individual. Look at him. He ended up dead. That's all we see, and that's all we talk about. Not even realizing, bro, like these are real-life situations that are going on in the streets, and people are publishing it all over YouTube, instigating the situations like nothing's going to happen. Like it's just going to remain on YouTube, and it's just going to be a form of entertainment because we're public figures. No, there's people on the streets that are really about that business, really about that life, who are the faces that we don't even see on YouTube that are the ones that are conducting the business and pulling them triggers and people are getting hurt by it. I mean, look at all the people that passed away, bro, that, that, that have been public figures. All the rappers that were from LA, all the rappers from up north. Instead of us just being right here like, yeah, bro, he's doing his thing, he's changing his life. Well, yeah, he did a cool music video, he did this, he did that. People will look for a reason to say, oh, bro, he's popping right now, man, let me go find some dirt on him. Let me go find some dirt on him. Swifty started trolling everybody. Then every Southern California rapper started dissing him. Everybody made fun of him because Chito Ranas cut him off. And then the individual gets himself in a position where he gets greenlighted by the Southside faction. And in my head, I'm like, bro, that Southside, that Southside greenlight is serious, bro. There's hundreds of thousands of Southsiders going to gun this fool down. And the one that does catch it, man, he's going to be the one that's going to be famous. Not Swifty. And that kind of sucks, man. It kind of sucks for that fool. But even though he did it to himself... He did it to himself. He started trolling everybody, disrespecting everybody, calling himself the king of L.A. But because he was a public figure and thought he can get away with doing that, now he got the green light on him in Southern California. And that's not the place to have a green light placed on you, bro, because Southern California, the, the Mexicanos down there and the Sureños down there, they take that real serious. All because he wanted to seek rap fame. All because he wanted to be the main talk of the town. All because of you two. He wanted to be famous. Social media is trying to make, social media is giving these people an idea that they can become famous and nothing could happen to them. But we're starting to see time and time again that YouTube is the place where people are going to notice who you are. And they're either going to love you or they're going to hate you. And if they hate you, they're going to knock you down for it. It doesn't matter. They don't need a reason. That might be their fame that they might need. Some of these individuals on the streets ain't looking for fame. Some of these individuals in the streets are just looking for a body. And I think a lot of us YouTubers are starting to forget that. 
over here posting each other's addresses, calling each other out, exposing one another. Man, sometimes people on the streets look at that and that's the, that's, that's the only thing they need, a reason to take somebody out. Trust me, sometimes I get comments in my comment section like, bro, man, if the person that knocks you down, bro, you're going to be, they're going to be, you're a trophy right now. They're going to they gonna be famous for that. And I just start laughing and I'll just give like a laughing emoji and like, yeah, you're pretty funny, bro. I respect it. But people have resorted to net banging, internet threatening, instigating situations, adding fuel to the fire. Well, guess what, man? That fuel to that fire is a real fire that can cause a blaze. It can really burn somebody. And we're over here using a social media platform to take one another out. And that's the part that sucks because it's easy to catch somebody's location. It's easy to see how somebody's moving just by them posting what they're doing in their daily lives. And people are utilizing YouTube like, yeah, hell yeah, bro. Hell yeah, I want to I see that. I want to see, where's he at? I'm, I'm, ooh, let's go over there, bro. He might be over there still. And that's it. That's how easy it is. Six nines over here posting videos being at the gym. And guess what? They caught that boy slipping at the gym. I understand that this is a public platform. So if you're going to post on it, whatever that is that you do in public, just know people are watching. You're either going to piss people off or you're going to encourage people to do better or do like what you're doing. But honestly, bro, I think YouTube's in the last past two years since I've been actually on it faithfully, paying attention to it and seeing what's going on. To me, it's not a platform of entertainment anymore. It's it gotten real dangerous right now. It got real dangerous. And just the way I'm told every day, a hey, tread lightly. You know, I can only give that same advice to everybody else that's on YouTube that wants to really get involved and become public figures and have your face out there really known. You know, that 50,000, 100,000 views that you see, you know, that might that might excite you a little bit. Like, yeah, man, 100,000 people know who I am. Look, I posted a one, one sh YouTube short of, the, of me going to the Santa Fe swap meets. And then I got a video posted right after that saying with 30 some comments saying, hey, bro, if you ever come back, bro, we're going to down you. That's how dangerous YouTube can be. So I just wish everybody that's on YouTube, man, I wish you guys the best, man, to stay safe. You know, I think about my safety and I think about my freedom a lot more now, man. I appreciate it a lot more. So I move differently. I respond differently and I act differently because of this, because of all the violence that stems from people posting on YouTube and trying to be YouTube famous. That's my best advice for the rest of the day. So with that being said, like I always say, it's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. Peace.